Roz, thank you. Speaking of steals, the man who leads the way for Fordham there is number 12. You heard David talk about him. Joseph Chartouni leads the A-10 in steals and is in the top three in the nation. And a couple of seniors for the Patriots. That is Marquise Moore and Jalen Jenkins looking for their very first A-10 tournament win. They are 0-3 as the Patriots came into the conference just three years ago. Welcome to Pittsburgh. Paul Burmeister alongside David Kaplan. How would the Fordham Rams pull out the upset here tonight, Dave? I think if they knock down some shots early, get some confidence, they set a school record with 255 threes, the record that they set last year at 243. If they shoot it well, they will be right in this ball game. Off to a good start to keep. Fordham won three out of four 8-10 games in January, but then lost four out of five. They've also lost three in a row coming into this one. Seven and 11 in regular conference play. Tavares misses. And get used to that. Marquise Moore, the leading rebounder in the A-10, averaging 10 a game, has won already. And don't forget, you said Mason hasn't won in the tournament. In 14 and 15, Fordham knocked him out. Livingston drives. Marquise Moore for three. No good. And tipped in by Jair Greer. Really good, aggressive take going back to the basket. Never went over the top of anybody, got inside position. There was no box out there. Fordham cannot do that. You heard Coach Neubauer in our open say, everybody's got a rebound and go to the glass. Scoring been an issue for the Rams all season long. And drawing the foul there, Javante Hawkins, second to last in the A-10 in scoring offense. That's where we find Fordham, Dave Paulson. Second season as the head coach, George Mason. And also in his second season, leading the way for the Rams is Jeff Newbaum. Dave Paulson engineered one of the nation's top 15 most improved teams this year. You're young, they're talented. Yeah, trending upward, 15 A-10 wins over the last two years. That's one more than the previous seven combined. Hawkins, 83% free throw shooter on the season. Starts out his evening two for two from the strut. Yeah, that's an amazing stat about Fordham. The number of wins over the last two years, more than the previous seven years combined. Inside to Greer, double teamed. And Sengfelder with the steal. Number one stealing team in the A-10. Sengfelder leads the team in threes. He's 0 for 1. And that's the second rebound for Moore. I had his game up at Rose Hill a little earlier in the year against Davidson. When Sangfelder sets his feet and gets good shots, he makes them. When he rushes it, I thought he rushed the first one he just took. That's when he gets himself in trouble. Jenkins, nice assist inside to Justin Kyer, the freshman. Antoine Anderson, second leading scorer to Javante Hawkins. Averages just over 11 points per game. Shot clock now down to six on the strong drive. Another rebound to Moore, and here come the Patriots. Livingston just inside the three, and it's 6-2 early Mason. Boy, I really like the strong dribble of Moore to get in the lane, realize I can't complete the play, find somebody behind him for an easy 15-footer. Chartouni all the way in, had it blocked by Jair Greer. This is Otis Livingston. And the foul called against Anderson. Well, real aggressive play out of George Mason. Really nice job in here to make a pass, interior pass. Tough play to complete. And then this is the one I'm talking about. You get the 15-footer that is off of the Marquise Moore. Rush it up the court, get in the paint, and then as the defense draws to him, Set him up for the assist. Really well done. And I don't want to hex the man at the line here, Cap. However, should point out 91% free throw shooter for the year. He's made 111 out of 122 shots. Number one of the 8-10. Two Eighth for two tonight. In the USA. It's amazing how some really good shooters go to the line and they just can't make free throws. And you watch a guy like this, he's so good at the line, he'd like to bottle it and sell that secret. Fordham yet to make a field goal. There are two points coming from the free throw line. Chartouni all the way in. Can't find it. 
Rebound to Livingston. Well, they ran that possession beautifully. Extra pass, the whole thing. They just didn't finish it. Regular season rhythm to the Patriots. They went loss, win, loss, win. The first 10 games of the conference season. And they won four out of five. They entered this tournament having lost four out of five. That's more all the way. Was fouled. And that's the block called against Hawkins. Well, you mentioned what they did the last five. Lost four out of their last five. Last two games, just four of 27 from beyond the arc. That's 14.8%. And in terms of experience, you look to brighter days. 296 of 351 D1 teams in experience. That's just 1.28 years per player. There will be a lot of success for GM. Marquise Moore, 70% from the line this year. The only player in the Atlantic 10 cap to average a double-double, yet he didn't make first team all-conference. Isn't that hard to believe? Yeah. But tells you the level of talent in this league. Peyton Aldridge, who I had on my first team when we did my, my awards a couple weeks ago on the St. Louis-St. Joe's game, Peyton Aldridge had 33 today, and he didn't make first team all-league from Davidson. 10-2, all Patriots so far as the Rams still looking for their first field goal. That's Chartouni. Great play by Marquise Moore. Here comes Livingston. McGuire back out to Livingston. Marquise Moore would much rather drive than shoot it from outside with a left hand, draws the foul. Well, we almost wore Antoine Anderson. He came <laughs> right into our monitor and uh, was somehow able to brace himself. Pretty good athleticism. You see the 10 points there for the Patriots. And that's Otis Livingston having his left eye looked at. Four of the five starters have already scored. And checking in one of the freshmen, Kamari Newman. Here he comes. And right there, he ended up falling right into our TV broadcast setup here. Came closer to knocking you over than me. Yes, this is true. And you're an ex-college football star. You're used to getting hit like that. I was happy to see him uh, running closer to your side <laughs> than mine. Marquise Moore, two for two there on that trip. And it's 12 to two now, Patriots. We talked about top of the broadcast, Cap, that offense had been an issue for Fordham throughout the season. And already they find themselves down 10. That's why I said to you early, one of the keys is they have got to make shots. How about that? They just were able to pluck a contact lens off the floor. That was outstanding eyesight from the bench. He ran right to the spot, knew exactly where it was. Didn't have to get down and look. He looked, even Dave Paulson shook his head and went, wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> I see one of the stats coming to life early here for Fordham. They're 0 for 6 from the field. For the season, 41%, second to last in the A-10. There's Hawkins. And before he made that shot, drew the foul. Foul called against Jair Greer. Used to watch... His father played, terrific career at Iowa State. Tremendous. Played a decade in the NBA. Yep, Jeff Grayer, he could really shoot it. Antoine Anderson. 0 for 7. Fordham is now from the field. Meanwhile, Mason is 3 for 4. Justin Kyer never had a hold of that one, and back comes Hawkins. Little running jump hook. There's their first bucket, and it's now 12-4. Really nice job by Hawkins. He was going to pull up at the three with the heat check shot and decided, you know what? Extra couple dribbles. I'm going to get myself a really good look, and he was able to get the soft touch and get it to drop. Good decision. Patriots set a program record with nine A-10 wins and even nine and nine in the conference during the regular season. Greer with the pull up. He has four points. I think Brer got hit. He looked right back at the official. Really? <laughs> Just as it was going through the hoop, he yes. had a glance at it. <laughs> 
Sinkfelder with shot clock down to three. The pretty little jump hook. His first two tonight. Again, he's their best three-point shooter. Two-three zone out of Fordham. They're going to give you a bunch of different looks defensively. So freshman Ian Boyd strong inside and turns it over. Here comes Anderson. Singfelder for three. And the rebound to Boyd. Freshman Boyd and also another freshman, Kamari Newman. Their production going way up here in the last couple of weeks. And there's Newman, misses his first shot. Singfelder inside now with the left hand. And the rebound to Newman. Well, that's the third layup inside. Not saying they're easy, that they've just come up an inch or two short of it. They have gotten good looks, just haven't knocked them down. They're exactly right. There's Greer for his first three. He bounces up and over the basket. Thank you. And that's how we'll go to our first break. Jair Greer, one of three starters for the Patriots already with four points. It's early in pit. 15 footer. And then here's a nice job by Jair Greer. Head shoulder fake, greatest untapped weapon in the game. Nobody uses it enough. He gets somebody up in the air, and then he goes right by him, gets an easy look. Let's check in with Roz. Outside of Fordham coach Newbauer's huddle, I was listening in. Almost the entire timeout was about defense. I expected that. But he did address some missed layups, and he said, we've got to finish it. We do all that work. It doesn't matter. We've got to get on the scoreboard. Guys, you're better than that. And right now, Roz, just two for 11, although Hawkins answers with a three. And just like that, the lead is cut to five. Three players with four points for the Patriots. So far, Livingston, Greer, and Moore. Ian Boyd dropped it off inside. This is Newman for three. He's 0 for 2. Good hustle rebound by Boyd. And had it knocked away by Ohams. Hustle rebound's a great way to describe it. There's two Fordham players, and there's Boyd. And Boyd outworks both of them for what we like to call 50-50 balls. That was a really good rebound. And Jesse Bunting checking in for the Rams. The defense there by Fordham and the team that leads the conference in steals comes up with one there. Hawkins has seven points already. The other Rams combined only have two. Well, Jesse Bunting hedged around that screen, did a great job shutting everything down, and it led to the turnover. Hawkins from just above the free throw line. Another one of those good looks you've talked about, Cap, missed. And back come the Patriots. Yeah, that's, you'll take that shot all day long. Good look inside to Boyd, had it knocked away, a foul on Shartsuni. See, defense, for me, is what's going to win the game. Yes, you want to make threes, and yes, you want to get out and run and score points, but if you can defend better, you will win 90% of your games. I thought Ford did a really nice job. Bunting just coming in. See how he hedges out there, and he really helps out, and now Livingston's caught, and he tries to see if he can feed the ball, and instead, Hawkins with the steal. Boom, gone the other way. Ian Boyd hits them both, and the Patriots 8-for-8 eight eight from the line to start tonight. Shot clock now to 10, Chartouni. Anderson at three, Hawkins 4-3. And here comes Otis Livingston. Marquise Moore pulls up. 
He has six points. Uh, he's built like a linebacker, so you always think, uh-oh, he's going to try and take me to the glass, and he has that ability. Instead, he just gives you one hard triple. He pulls up, buries it. Also already has four rebounds, does the leading rebounder in the 8-10. Chartsuni for three, got it. His first points of the night. The lead cut to six. Uh, they needed to get him going. And if you watch that shot, he slowed the process down. Shoulders over his toes, elbow in, feet set. Just catch it, load it up, fire. Inside the Jenkins, he's yet to score. Draws the foul, he'll go to the line to shoot two. Fordham Rams hanging around here as George Mason has started out hot offensively. Marquise Moore, with the only player in the 8 set to average a double-double, wasn't first-team all-conference, but as we just saw there, he was recognized with the awards at the end of the season as the most improved player from last year. And when you average 17 and 10, you ought to get something. And especially you stand six foot two and you look at his numbers in comparison to the rest of the country. Pretty amazing to see what he's been able to do. He's the only guard in the country with 13 or more double doubles, third in the NCAA in defensive rebounds per game. That's all players. 8.8 .8 defensive rebounds a game. And he's a top rebounding guard in the country at 10 and a half rebounds per game. And he has four already in nine minutes. Well, neither team has missed a free throw. The big difference, though, George Mason been to the line ten times. And Fordham only twice. That's Hawkins all the way in, fouled by Boyd. He gets the two, and he'll go to the line. Really nice job by Hawkins. Put the ball on the deck. He just got one step on the man. He's got him turned. Now he knows there's no way he can get in front of me. Take it right to the basket hard. And there's the foul on the right arm. Hoop and the harm get the opportunity for three. I think you picked the right guy to talk about at the top of the broadcast when you picked out a Fordham Rand. I mean, he is the one keeping them in this. Really the only one knocking down shots. Yeah, Chartuni hit the one three, but you're right. Hawkins with ten points is the reason that they've been able to stay in the game here early. Averaging just under 14 points per game. Otis Livingston at point for George Mason. Ian Boyd. Strong drive to the hoop, forced it up there, gets his own rebound and puts it back in. You talk about a group of guys that don't have a seven-footer in the middle that are just junkyard dogs on the glass. The number one rebounding team in the 8-10. Sengfelder hasn't hit a three yet until then. And the Rams hanging around here, Cap, only down by four. The best way to a good look for the perimeter is always through the paint. Chartuni with the penetration, the kick to the corner, and then get, let Sengfelder set his feet and then get a good shot in the flow of the offense. Shot clock down to 10, a steal for Fordham. And a good heads up defensive play by Ian Boyd. Best way is go inside out. Here comes Chartuni, draws three white shirts. Singfelder's feet are set. Defenders cannot react quickly enough. He's a very good shooter, and when you give him some daylight, he's an excellent shooter, and he buries that one, his first triple. And Fordham is yet to commit a turnover. Inside to Singfelder, great look from Chartuni. Really good pass, but a really good seal. There was no way Marquise Moore was going to be able to defend him. Much smaller guy and caught on the backside. They ask yourself, how's Fordham hanging around? They haven't committed a turnover yet. No surprise from the team. Number one in the conference in turnover margin. Blocking foul called against Sengfelder. He has the last five points for the Rams. That's the sixth team foul for Fordham. Bunting and Anderson check back in. Two on Sinkfelder, he'll take the seat, which I think is a really good call by Jeff Newbar. Mason was up 18 to 9. They found points tough to come by since. Marquise Moore all the way in and draws the foul. 
the seventh team foul committed by Fordham. And that one called on Bunting. Well, here comes the dribble drive. It's close. I think it's the right call. I thought he just, let's see, yeah, he just is a hair late getting there. But the key to the whole thing was you had an amazingly good double in the corner, and they were able to pass out of that double all the way across the court, and now the defense breaks down. There's a seam, and he gets himself to the rim, and he gets the foul opportunity. Hasn't missed a free throw yet tonight. He's 5 for 5. The Patriots, as a team, a perfect 11 for 11. Sinkfelder has scored the last five points here for Fordham, but he's on the bench with a couple of fouls. Almost the first turnover by Fordham. Shot clock inside of 10. Anderson clocked down at two. Otis Livingston with a rebound. Here we go, zone again out of Fordham. They just keep changing looks. Now called against Fordham on Joseph Chartouni. Rams coming back. They only trail by four. Three, but when he scores and he's aggressive going to the basket, it opens everything else up. He's the one who dribbled through the paint and set up uh, Sinkfelder with the first three from the left corner. He's got to do more of that, and that comes with aggressiveness. Seven fouls against Fordham, so now in the one-on-one -on -one situation for George Mason the rest of the half. Don't want to hex them, but I should also point out they haven't missed from the free throw line yet. This is true, but you know that if they do, we'll point <laughs> to you and go, your fault. That's 14 out of 14 as they push the lead back to six. I'm not a cliche guy, but I'll find some cliche if that's <laughs> appropriate. Rebounding, big problem for Fordham here already. They've been out-rebounded 16 to 2. And they fail to come up with that one. And 16 to 2 is a bit on the excessive side, Cap, but they are dead last in the A-10 and rebounding margin. Well, George Mason comes into this one number one in that category. The second time we've had to tend to the floor. We had the right. contact lens. Lost identification contact lens. and pickup. That was unbelievable. That was that was it's gonna be hard to top. That is. From across the floor. Right. He no just less. literally ran across the floor, saw it, picked it up, and gone. Antoine Anderson looking to create. Kicks it out to Singfelder. Foul called against Greer. People do not like the slight bump becomes a foul, but the officials have been told this is how we want the game called. It's called freedom of movement. We want speed. We want balance. We do not want you to be able to mess up a game by just bumping guys. That's why those calls are in the rule book and they have to be called. Fourth foul called against George Mason. Chartouni just one out of four. Now he's two out of five. Lead back to four for George Mason. That's what they need more of. Joseph Chartouni's aggressiveness will set everything else up. Ian Boyd, the freshman, to another freshman here. Justin Kyer. Patriots struggling from outside so far. 0 for 3 from three-point land. Now 0 for 4. That's 4 for 31. On three-point attempts the last two-plus games. Sinkfelder for 3. Rebounds and more. Uh, Jalen Jenkins closed out well, and that's why that was a tough 3 for Sinkfelder. Good look inside to Jenkins. 
Justin Kyer with the dish. It's a good 20-second clip for Jenkins. Very good job. Not fouling, contesting the three, and then getting the bucket at the other end. Chartuni almost with a walk outside the half, so he knocks down the three. Another Chartuni assist leading to a basket by his penetration into the paint, drawing the Mason defense. The Rams have made four out of 12 three-point attempts. While Mason, 0 for 4. Otis Livingston with a pull-up. Pretty move there for two. Antoine Anderson left wide open for that. In and out. Goes off of Bunting and back to the Patriots. Now let's watch the last couple baskets. There's a really nice head and shoulder fake. And there's Jenkins camped out inside. Good dish. And then Livingston off that high ball screen from Jenkins. That's his third positive play in three possessions. Excellent job by Jenkins. And Defend Livingston. at one end. Get the job done twice at the offensive end. Levingston hasn't missed tonight here. Cap, he's two for two from the field, also two for two from the line. Inside the Boyd, blocked by Ohams. Blocked once again, and Ohams with a rebound. That's a good no call. He was caught in no man's land. Chartuni for three, and the lead cuts to two. Starting to heat up. He's starting to become a force offensively, whether it's via the pass. He's got a couple of baskets. I think he's got three now. Two threes and a shot inside. It started out a 12-2 George Mason lead. Fordham, they've found their shooting rhythm. They've clawed their way back and now trail only 30-28. to Shot clock down to five. Livingston pulls up. Absa with the rebound. And Fordham with a chance to tie or take a one-point lead. This is for the lead. Great play by Marquise Moore. Livingston. Wise choice to pull it back. Inside to Boyd. Justin Kyer out of control. Throws it away. Fordham Rams slowly working their way back inside and finishes it himself he knocks down two triples that's a deep one boom when this kid is right and he's also one of the best steel men in the country makes Fordham a very very dangerous team an interesting player isn't he leads the conference in steals top three in assists and he's coming off the best two game scoring stretch of his a10 season where he had 20 and 17 and he already has eight tonight for more let's check in with Ross Guys, Coach Paulson is not pleased about Chartuni starting to find his rhythm and touch. He told his team, it's not our offense, it's our defensive intensity. He wants better closeouts on Chartuni. There he is, getting his 10th point tonight and tying this one. All the way back from down 12 to 2 and also 18 to 9. Ball the U.S. Bank NBC Sports Report at the half. Carolyn Nano, Ron Thompson will be with you in the studio telling you about an upset in the Big 12 and also likely show you the highlights there and a down-to-the-wire finish in the ACC. Paul Burmeister, David Kaplan, round two of the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament. Seventh seed at George Mason and number 10 seed Fordham all tied at 30. And that's Ian Boyd, the freshman, driving in and the foul called against Chuba Ohams. Well, he slid over. He knew he was going to take a hard hit here. And there's clearly that's a block. Hit the deck hard. That's just a good, aggressive take. And I think he may have gotten hit on the back of the head by Chartuni's knee. He did not hit his head on the floor. Take one more look at it. I believe that's the knee of Joseph Chartuni that caught him in the back of the head. First miss of the night. It's 14 out of 15 now for the Here Patriots. it is again. 
Okay, he there's the block, clearly a block, and as he goes down, tough to tell. But you could see the facial reaction in the other view of Chartouni where, ooh. Ian Boyd has five points. He made one out of two. The Patriot lead back to one. O'Hams to the sideline. Take a seat. Chartouni now with ten points. His last two tied it. Open lane to the hoop again. And just couldn't finish. That was a foul of frustration. Exactly. Those are ones that if you have four late in the game, you're thinking, boy, I wish I could have one back. He's got to make that shot, and he tell you that himself, and then you cannot put yourself in that position. That is just a foul of frustration. And that's his third foul. And that's your number one steal man, your top assist man, and one of your better scorers, as he already has 10 points. Well... I cannot believe he's going to be staying in this game. Right now, they are not sending anybody to the scorer's table for him. The Patriots will shoot two with each foul now. I would not do this. If I was Jeff Newbar, I, there is no chance that a guy who I'm asking to be an aggressive part running my offense. I can't have him on the floor with three already in the first half. I can't. Chartouni remains out there with the ball now. Singfelder, a little pull-up jump. Chartouni comes up with it. Antoine Anderson for three. Livingston with a rebound. Now, if I'm George Mason, I don't want to get away from my set offense, but if I get a chance, I'm going right at Joseph Chartouni. Chartouni guarding the freshman right there, Newman. Livingston with it on top. Shot clock down to 10. A little pull up there. He made that moments ago. This time he misses. Singfelder rebound. And here comes Anderson. Between the legs to Hawkins. Had the open three. And really took the more difficult shot of the two he had presented to him. He did. He had an open look that I'll take another couple dribbles and ended up getting a contested shot. Marquise Moore all the way to the hoop. Jalen Jenkins bites forward inside. Back up and in. Jenkins now has four. Jenkins and Moore, the two seniors on this team. They come into this one both 0-3 in A-10 tournament play. Chartouni thought about going up with it. Back out to Hawkins as the shot clock is down to seven. A deep three for Hawkins. And Moore with a rebound. Marquise Moore already with seven boards. This is Newman for three. And credit that Ian Boyd. Got a hand in there, and the Rams couldn't pick it back up. Yeah, really good aggressive play by Ian Boyd, and that's what led to that turnover right there. The first turnover committed by Fordham. The George and then take it back up to the backboard. So far, the Patriots big time winning the battle of the boards with 26 rebounds to only nine for Fordham but Fordham they're winning from beyond the arc they've knocked down five three-pointers and while the Patriots right now 0 for 5 from deep range and you go back the last two and a half games that means they're four for their last 32 in three-point attempts four second difference between the shot clock And the actual game clock. Newman for three. That isn't exactly what they wanted. Dave Paulson, none too pleased, just pounded his hand on the chair. Be careful, coach. I watched Enos Cantor break his hand that way. <laughs> Shot clock violation as the ball never hit the rim. Three and a half seconds left. 
Antoine Anderson with it. Now, the Fordham team is saying that this should be a shooting foul because they threw it down the court, and the referee immediately turned and said, no, no, and that's the right call. That was take it, just fling it down, and hope that you can talk an official into it. And they have fouls to give as they're not in the one-on-one -on -one situation yet. Anderson from just beyond half court almost. And that's how the first half ends with George Mason leading Fordham by five, 35 to 30. Top score for the Patriots so far. The Thank you, Roz. And that's something you pointed out right away, Cap. That they were getting good shots, the Fordham offense. They just didn't make them early. They started 0 for 7. Then they started falling from in and out, and your guy, Chartouni, started coming off. He did, and he's got to continue that, as does Hawkins. Here we go, 2-3 zone again. It's just a different look. Fordham will send you a bunch of different looks. Chartouni's on the back end rather than out top because it keeps him more out of foul trouble. At the top, you get driven on. That's how you pick up the body foul. Greer misses. Chartouni with three fouls comes up with a rebound. He's got to be smart. He's got to be really, really intelligent and pick his spots. He gets to four. You have no choice but to sit him. And we'll see if the Rams can get Antoine Anderson going. Averages 11 points per game, but was 0 for 5. Coming off two of his worst games of the year where he scored four in back-to-back -back games. And Hawkins with an off-balance shot. Not the shot Jeff Neubauer wanted to start the half. No, that is just a step back, fall away. He has got to do a better job on shot selection. And he quickly picks up a foul here. Yeah, foul called against Hawkins. That's his second. Marquise Moore, number 22 for George Mason, averaging the conference best 10 rebounds already with nine. Goes along well with his eight points. This is Jalen Jenkins. Thought Moore was going to come one way. He stayed back, and that's a turnover. The unforced errors are the ones that drive a coach crazy. Sometimes somebody makes a good play. It's the ones where you just toss it away that you look and go, guys, it's gold. We've got to preserve that basketball. The seven turnovers now committed by George Mason. And meanwhile, Fordham committed only one. The Rams, the number one turnover margin team in the A-10. And at the bottom of the conference, at 14th, that's where we see George Mason. Chartouni guarded by Jalen Jenkins. Holmes inside, Sankfelder. Tough layup, but another certainly one. a makeable shot. Another one that Jeff Neubauer said, guys, we have got to convert these. Off the knee is Chartouni. It'll stay here with George Mason. Mason didn't have a single player in double figures. In the first half, while Chartouni and Hawkins had 10 for the Rams. And now, Marquise Moore has 10. He's been quiet lately offensively. There, he picked his spots. The lane's there, and then as Chartouni goes by on the baseline, he wants no part of that. 10 points, 9 boards for Moore. The senior looking for his very first A-10 conference tournament win. They've lost the previous three. Moore with a rebound. Now has a double-double. Greer just allowed to go all the way in. Sinkfelder with a rebound. Antoine Anderson, no points. Javante Hawkins. Got the offense started for Fordham early. Chartouni now with the shot clock down to eight. Sinkfelder does have a jump hook down here. Oh, the up and under. And another missed inside opportunity for the Rams. Marquise Moore back. Two-point swing there for the Patriots. That's a four-point swing. Four-point swing. You give up the one here. I think it may have slipped out of his hands. You cannot continue to miss these opportunities. Those are just a killer. Oh, 
And the foul called against the freshman, Justin Connor. So just, just outstanding footwork. And, I mean, he didn't lose it. He just missed it. And it leads to this at the other end. Soft touch. Little runner. Moore gets it to go. Moore has 12. And if you go back to late in the first half, it was tied at 30. And George Mason on a 9 to nothing run. Chartuni with the three fouls, still with the drive in and headed blocked by Moore. Boy, he is tough. Moore is really, really tough defensively. Didn't foul, timed it perfectly. Moore had six points in the first half, six already in the second half. Sinkfelder with a rebound. Moore also has 11 rebounds already. Came in averaging 17 and just a little over 10. Sinkfelder will take it all the way in. This time makes it and also draws the foul against Greer. He just pumped his fist to the bench. He goes, yes! Finally. We've been talking about Marquis more than him he was just part of that whole area but these are parts of being a coach they say in coaching you're hired to at some point be fired 98 percent of you so unfortunate that he will land on his feet Chris Sengfelder completes the three-point play and Fordham now trails by six again two three zone out of Fordham Chartuni on the back end Hawkins out top Ian Boyd, Livingston, shot clock to 10. He's had that pull-up jumper throughout the first half, knocks down his first one of the second half, and that's an open spot in that zone. Open spot, but it was all set up by what we like to call a high ball screen. You watch that screen, he rubs right off it, shots easy there, right at the elbow with nobody there. And that's a tough shot by Hawkins. Rebound by Jenkins, here comes Livingston, one on three. And he'll slow it down. Marquise Moore right back inside the Jenkins to Boyd. Ball coming back to Fordham. Now watch him call. Shot clock's dripping down. But he's asking, get me the ball screen. Come on, Jenkins, get out there. There's the ball screen. Nobody does a good job hedging around and helping. Wide open look, and he drills it. That is running off a screen perfectly. Eight turnovers now committed by George Mason. Defense keeping Fordham in this. Need to find a way to knock down some shots. It's the exact same way the first half started for the Rams. St. Filler guarded by Jenkins. Chartuni for three. Got it. Much needed. That was a call from the bench by one of the assistants who just pointed at him. Chartuni pointed at his head and said, bingo. Chartuni now with 13 points. And the lead cut to five. Jenkins been pretty quiet offensively. Kicks it out to Livingston. Steal by Havza. Moore coming down on defense. And Anderson with his first bucket tonight. The lead is three. Nice job by Anderson to not quit on the Havza layup. It looked like Hapsa was absolutely going to make it. Anderson didn't quit. Up in the air and finished it. Another steal led to that two points. Nine points off the turnovers for Fordham. Zero for the Patriots. Great look inside. The Boyd spins up and in almost. Knocks it down. Foul called against Hapsa. Well, let's go back to the other bucket. There's Chartuni. Right from the short corner, comes, flashes out to the top, gets the look, and then there's Havsa with the steal. And this looks like it's definitely going to go down. It doesn't, and Anderson stays right with the play and gets his first deuce. And Boyd has that one go in and out. Chartuni, the two games prior to this one, had 20, then 17, now has 13 already tonight.
Ian Boyd already passed his six-point average. Knocks one out of two down there. And he's the only one to miss a free throw tonight. He's missed two. He's missed two. I believe they're 18 to 20, yes. There you go. Late look inside to Chartouni. He was open a, a count earlier. Hawkins threw that one away. Chartouni does have three fouls. And that's now two turnovers. Only two committed by Fordham. Jenkins open at the foul line. Strong in, pivots his way inside. Olham's with the defense. And a block. And it went off of Jenkins. Chuba Olham's. Nice job in those couple of seconds there. Held his ground inside. The officials are not going to bail you out when you're trapped under the basket and you try and jump back up into the defender. You are not going to get that call. Three players in double figures for the Rams right now. Chartouni, as we mentioned, with 13. Zinkfelder has 10, and Hawkins, who's on the bench right now, also has 10. George Mason did lead 39-30 to 30 here early in the second half. Fordham coming back here. And there's Anderson with an open three. And three seconds called just before he released it. I did not see who they called the three seconds on. It could have been Ohams on the other side of the lane. Marquise Moore, 12 points, 11 boards already. Livingston back out to Moore. Livingston for three. Jenkins had it for a moment. Anderson fights back for it. Timeout Fordham. Able to get that timeout call in the deep corner. Fordham coming back just a little bit. Rebounding numbers, and it's just astounding that we've got a four-point game. As you look at those stats there, 34 to 13, 9-3 on the glass. Points off turnovers, though, Fordham 9-0, so that has been a big help for them. That turnover's big story. George Mason, as you just saw, 11 total turnovers, only three committed by Fordham. Eleven fifty-seven left. The Patriots continue to lead the Rams by four. Instead, for a jump shot, since 1993-94, only three players have averaged 17 plus points a game, 10 and a half or more rebounds per game, and three and a half or more assists per game. Two you've never heard of. Ben <laughs> Simmons did it last year. Marquise Moore, if he finishes the season on his averages now, will become only the fourth guy. Wow. It's, it's in 25 years. It's incredible. The only player in the league to average a double-double. Habsa up and under with the reverse layup. We and it's a two-point game. Got a ball game. Fordham now 4 for 11 this half. George Mason struggling from the field. 3 for 8. Ian Boyd, the freshman, all the way in. Off the glass. No good. Hapsa couldn't come up with it. This is Hawkins. Jump ball called and the possession coming back the other way to Fordham. With a chance to lock us up. It was tied at 30, then a 9-0 George Mason run. And now we're at 42-40 with a chance to tie or go ahead on a home run ball. Home run ball, speaking of, 6 out of 19. That's what Fordham is so far. And from beyond three-point range, George Mason. 0 for 7. Fordham coming in as the 10th seed, taking on George Mason. Their 7th seed, by the way, the highest they've ever had. It's the 4th, 8, 10, 30 that played in.
Perhaps they had the last two for Fordham left open there. He's got the last five points. Hardly that's a two-pointer. He's got the last four, and we're all tied at 42. He got a good, clean look, and we are locked up at 42. I think he was just on that line. We were also tied at 30. It's the first time we've been tied since. Marquis Moore spin move up with the left hand. Couldn't quite get it. Jenkins didn't get it to go. Ball comes back to Fordham. It's amazing, Cap, that they're in this position being out rebounded 35 to 15 right now in a 9 to 1 run. Sartuni been hanging on to the three foul. Picked up the third late in the first half. Anderson with a tough shot. Moore with another rebound. To Greer. Got it. Really good finish by Greer. Did not charge. It was either Sankfelder or Hawkins slid over. They were both down there. Really good job to slither his way to the basket and get it on the window. Moore's 12th rebound led to that, too. It puts the Patriots back up by two. This is Sankfelder inside. Jenkins guarding. Jenkins with a rebound. More leading score for the Patriots so far with 12. Almost at his 14th. Out of bounds. Off of the Patriots. Well, this is how close you come to a three. Instead, it's a two. Here's Hafsa. I mean, one foot just that toe on the line. tonight and meanwhile the Fordham Rams coming on a bit they've made two out of three three-pointers in the second half and they've made seven total for the game Chartuni will take a seat with those three fouls who get a breather and then he'll go the rest of the way and Jeff Neubauer gambled left him in in the first half with three and he still got three so coach won that one Freshman Kyer with it. Now to Moore, leading score, 14 points, 12 boards. A deep three for Greer. And the rebound to Anderson. Boy, did he go up top of oh, for half that one? Hawkins, left open. Book it. Somebody's starting to feel it here. Second three here. First one put his team up by one. That one has the Rams up by two. 2-3 zone again out of Fordham. Moore going one-on-one, -on -one, kicks it back out. And draws the foul against Anderson. Well, watch this. See the head and shoulder fake? There goes Moore flying right by. And now he recycles, gets a good clean look and drills the triple. That head and shoulder fake is such a great weapon if guys will commit to it. He's TJ Klein's mother. Oh. And she stands with her back to the basket, flips it over her head from 47 feet and <laughs> drills it. And then bows to the kids that were in the crowd waiting for her to speak. They're the only people here. Was that her first attempt? That was her second attempt. Okay. Otis Livingston, 91% free throw shooter, tops in the 8-10 conference, knocks down his first there. And he's four for four from the line. Number 32 for Fordham has been the man here in the second half. That's Javante Hawkins. He has 21 points. All the way to the hoop. Impressive drive by Antoine Anderson. I will tell you what. Antoine Anderson all night long has played with his hair on fire, with a motor. 
doesn't always make the right play at times. He's got some fouls. But Mooney to Singfelder gets you another basket inside. Timeout for Fordham. They want to regroup, set their defense, get back in the 2-3 zone. They are really playing very inspired basketball the last 10-12 minutes. Shartuni, number one assist man for the Rams. He has four now tonight. Jenkins all the way in. Offensive drawing foul. the charge there. Ohams. Now the question is, was he in the restricted area? That's what Dave Paulson's asking. Let's see. No, he was not outside the restricted area. It's a fifth foul against George Mason this half. There's some pressure. George Mason with a trap in the corner. It's amazing the patience and also the mental toughness shown here. Got by Fordham Trail the majority of the game. 12-2 early. 39-30 early in the second half. Coming all the way back to control this one by seven. Chartuni with a deep three. No good. And Chartuni has it back. And now George Mason, they've been what felt like in control the majority of this game. Hit the two-minute mark, they're down by seven. Give Fordham a lot of credit. They never panicked. They just kept running their stuff. Shot clock to ten. This is Anderson being guarded by Boyd. Hawkins has 21 points. That would be a tough 23. And they rebound to Moore. Good defensive set. Strong all the way in, missed the layup. And draws the foul. Chartuni, that's his fourth. Gone a long time. He picked up number three if you're just tuning in. Late in the first half. Jeff Newbar said, I'm leave you. I trust you. Veteran player. 70% free throw shooters. Marquise Moore. Seven for seven tonight. He has 15 points and 14 rebounds. Feed it back outside for an open look. You might get the old-fashioned three-point play with the hoop and the arm. You may just get a layup out of it. But don't panic for the first look and feel like you got to jack it up. Marquise Moore looking for his 16th point tonight. He averages 17. That cuts it to five as he and fellow senior Jalen Jenkins looking for their first tournament victory in their careers as Patriots. Chartuni has four fouls fouled by Boyd there. That's the sixth foul committed by the Patriots. And the fourth call against Boyd. into this game having lost three games in a row. Chartuni has remained in this game even though he picked up that third foul that back in the first half. Anderson shot clock down to four. <laughs> even prettier than the previous drop. That was beautiful. Do you notice how he got in the paint like a running back? Got to pick his spot, chokes down the motor, and then boom! There I go. Greer fires up a three. Moore with a rebound. Had it stolen. Has it with him. He calls a timeout. Amazing how the Rams have come back to lead by seven. And Antoine Anderson. Love his energy. I love the... But earlier today, I was doing sidelines on the LaSalle game. They're 19 down. And I listened into their huddle, and John Giannini, 19 down. We're okay. We're fine. Just run our stuff. They got it down to a two-point game and ended up losing late. But they never panicked. Those are well-coached teams. Anderson with it. And fouled by Livingston. And you look at the score and how much time is left, Cap, and you say, well, to come back, you're going to have to have missed free throws by Fordham, and Mason's got to make some three-pointers. But the three-pointer has been their enemy so far. They're 1 for 12. Right. They have not had any success 
from beyond the arc. But you had to use up these fouls to get into the foul situation. This is the seventh. There's the miss, and now you got an opportunity. Trailing only by seven now. And this is Moore with the three. Got it. Down four. Right back in the ballgame. Hawkins with it, fouled by Greer. 30 seconds left, four-point game. Well, Marquise Moore gets a pretty good look here. He's got a little bit of a hitch in that shot, but he's it's a flat shot, and it was right on time, and he nails it. 19 points, 15 boards for Marquise Moore. Came in averaging 17 and 10. Hawkins, 84% at the line. 22 points, game high. Five-point game, 30.9. Still attack. You can throw it out and get the three any time. Take the ball and attack the basket. Need points. Hawkins knocks them both down to push that lead back up to six. Winner of this one tomorrow night will play the second seeded VCU Rams. Livingston deep three. He nails it. Three point game. Well, that changed it. Out. That changes it. One possession game. Zartuni bringing it in. Is Anderson fouled by Newman? So Anderson goes to the line. He's made his last three shots from the field. He's also a 71% free throw shooter. He does have the only free throw miss tonight, though, for the Rams. 0 for 1. This will be the last one that's 1 and 1. The next foul. You go to the double bonus. Automatic two shots. Big miss. Moore with the rebound. There you go. Three-pointer ties it. Moore all the way in. Patriots trail by one. 13 seconds left. Love the take. Love that he took the ball to the basket because you extended the game. If he misses and then they get the rebound, it's less whatever drips off here to get yourself a three-pointer to tie the game. You put yourself in position. That guy right there, Dave Fawcett, his team and he have put themselves in a position to have a shot here. Ten-seeded Rams looking for the upset against the number seven Patriots. And that's Sinkfelder fouled by Moore. Sinkfelder will go to the line. 29 of 41 on the season. That's a 71% free throw shooter. And he's one for one from the line tonight. But when you feel these, you look, there's none of your teammates standing around. It's just different. You know how big these free throws are. You know if you lose at 13 and 18... It's over. Season ends. George Mason, 19 and 12, 9 and 9 in the conference. They'll probably play in a postseason tournament. For Fordham, it's win this tournament or your season's over. Huge miss by Sengfelder. Both teams out of timeouts. But George Mason, they fought their way back to be in excellent position. Even if he makes it, they're just down two. Two missed free throws in a row by the Rams. Singfelder hits his second, and it's back to that two-point lead. Who do you want to shoot this one, Cap? I would think Moore, he's my best scorer, but I really would try and take the ball in the paint. I could toss it back out for a perimeter shot to win the game. 
I can get a shot inside or I can get myself to the free throw line. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's going to the line with just 6.8 left. Close to a travel there. Close. Close. Chartouni commits his fifth foul. There he comes. Oh, Harvey Anderson commits his fifth foul. No doubt about the foul. He got right in his way. There was no charge there. And now you send him to the line with a chance to tie the ball game. And he has not missed from the line. He's eight for eight tonight. But, you know, in baseball, we talk about high leverage. You know, a guy comes in with a nine-run lead. Not such a tough thing to close out a ball game. When there's a one-run lead, there's men on base, pretty tough. These free throws, far different than the eight he has already taken and made this evening. Now, the, the senior, the only player in the 8-10 conference to average a double-double with 21 points and 16 boards tonight, needs two free throws to tie. you got to slow your heart rate down. Mm, first miss. He made his previous eight free throws this evening. Told you. Your heart starts pumping faster. You, oh my God, I know what's at stake. You've got to slow it down. Look at what they've done tonight. Still plenty of time. There's seven seconds left, 6.8. You have time to make this foul and then still get a chance. But you got to make this. Missed. And with the rebound inside to Jenkins. And the ball will stay with George Mason. Three seconds left. No timeout to diagram a play. 3.4 seconds left. You wanted more to have it when they brought it down the court. The 3.4 is a ton of time. And you get it in. it in. May run a hand back. You may run him tossing it in and getting the ball back. Up top to Livingston, to Jenkins, the senior ties it at the buzzer. We are going to overtime. They never panicked. They ran their play. They knew they had time. We are playing bonus basketball. It's like getting a great meal. They buy your dessert for you. Overtime, because you can't tell me a possession in overtime with four minutes left is not as important as a possession in the final two minutes of regulation. It's equally as important. They'll fix that. The officials told me before the game, stupid, we know <laughs> it's got to get fixed. But they cannot use the monitor to check possession until the final two minutes. Marquise Moore. He now has 23, and the Patriots set a two-point lead. How good do you think he feels having missed the two free throws that he is alive to fight another day? Hawkins, the top scorer for Fordham in regulation. He had 23 points. Chartuni kicks it out to Hawkins. John Clock at 10. One-on-one -on -one against Moore. Strong defense by the senior. John Clock down to two. Excellent defense by the Patriots. And let's check in with Hawkins. Heading into overtime, George Mason players were fired up, but guess who was fired up even more? Coach Paulson. He said, it's a long game, guys. It was a long game, guys. And do you know what we did? We stopped thinking. We started attacking. Guys, start attacking. Keep attacking. Be over the top. Everything. Give everything we've got. George Mason outscored him 7-1. to one. An incredible 7-1 to one in the final 31 seconds. That's clear. They've scored the first five points of overtime. Got him a good look on the corner. That short corner, kick it down there, and he was ready to shoot it. And they've got a five-point lead. Now Fordham needs to get a good shot opportunity. Don't panic. Don't rush. Inside the short Tooney. A lot of contact there for Moore. No and, doubt. And that's what they call the two here. buckets to start overtime here for Mason. That is the first one by Marquise Moore. He has 23. Greer moments ago with a three. Like the pass to the short corner. Look at the emotion, there, guys. Sartuni cuts it to four. Been quiet the second half offensively. Had 13 in the first. 
Hits them both. Mason trailed by seven in his final couple minutes. Fought back. Livingston, a little pull up, nails it. Boy, George Mason, it's like they took the punch, they got off the mat, and now they're playing with a renewed energy. Moore, Greer, and Livingston all making shots to start overtime. The Patriots three for three in OT. Chartuni all the way in, had it blocked by Greer. Mark with the Patriots up by five inside to Ohams. And had it blocked by Geyer, but a foul call. Well, really good pass by Chartouni, but I thought Ohams just a little slow with his release. He's got to be thinking, as soon as that ball hits my hands, I'm up, exploding to the rim. See how he has to gather himself there, and then here comes the second defender, but he's going to get a shot at the line. That's three fouls against the freshman Geyer. Ohams. Not good from the line, only 6 out of 17 this year. Now 6 out of 18. Misses them both, Moore with another rebound. 23 points, 17 boards. They stay 2-3 zone. Good patience shown by George Mason. Why not? Leading by five. Livingston tough three. Crashing the board square to Moore. Wow. He was right there. And we talked earlier, Paul, how he's so aggressive trying to track down rebounds. That ball was not his rebound. All of a sudden, there it was loose. He came up with it and got the stick back. Hawkins with a miss. Livingston pulls it down. Fouled by Ohams. And back to what Moore just did to get 25 points. Cap, a lot of players look strong, but they don't always play strong. He plays strong. He, see how that ball was not his. And then all of a sudden, he's there in the paint because he never quits out of play. Puffs up his arms and says, get out of my way. How about a line of 25 and 17 for a guy who's 6'2". It's incredible. Livingston, top free throw shooter in the Atlantic 10, 91%. Five for five tonight. Again, I caution people thinking that this game may be over now, eight-point lead. It was a seven-point lead for Fordham with, what, 58 seconds? So they're up nine in overtime. Keep in mind, in the, inside the final minute, they outscored Fordham seven to one. Last few moments have been all Patriots. Dal called against Jenkins. Chance for Fordham to score points without the clock moving. People wonder why coaches don't have a voice by the time March ends. Dave Paulson just showed you why. Chartouni, two out of two from the free throw line tonight, has 15 points. If they can cut it to seven here with the Chartouni field goal, all they got to do to think back a couple minutes ago. George Mason trailed by seven toward the end of regulation. Found a way to come back in time. Well, I know my friend Dennis Fitzsimons is watching somewhere back in the Midwest. He is a Fordham grad, was on the board of trustees, played basketball at Fordham, and is a diehard Rams fan. Gotta like the effort tonight from the 10th seeded Rams. George Mason, who showed the most fight, the final moments there are regulation to come back and tie. And now they're up seven in OT. Caps a tight defense against Moore. All the way in, inside to Greer, had a block by Sinkfelder. Back up and in. 
tremendous second effort by all the Patriots here to start OT. That was a great second effort by Graham. A couple of effort buckets here last time, last two trips down the court, and Kyer, the freshman with the steal. Lead at nine, inside of 130, and with the ball. Livingston had the assist to Jenkins. Final second to send it to overtime. Shot clock inside at 10 for Moore, who has 25 points. Greer inside to Jenkins, back out to Kyer. Drills it. Boy, he had all day to make a sandwich and load that one up. That probably was the dagger at 81-69. Asa misses the three. Moore with another board. So you're going to look at this score and go, wait a minute. One by how many? In overtime? Moore just celebrating a little bit too early. Basically just gave Chartouni that two points. But they still lead by ten. Ohams with the foul there. With a flurry of blows landed by George Mason in this overtime period to have a 12-point lead that's now only 10, four fouls against Ohams. Yeah, flurry of activity is the way to describe it. I thought they'd done a very good job, George Mason, at getting off the mat, catching their breath, and, and you could tell they had this renewed energy after they hit the first shot of overtime. There's a bounce in their step. They dodged the executioner and here they were ready to fight. And they did come out and make their first three shots, a couple of pull-ups and also a three-pointer in overtime, but then the second effort really came in to get them a couple of buckets to really put it away. Yep. Hawkins has 23 points tonight, been quiet recently. Another rebound to Moore. Yep, they're not even gonna foul, that's gonna do it. Shot clock off, George Mason is gonna advance. Really? Brutal loss for Fordham. Brutal. Incredible. They came back to tie it. Livingston to Jenkins in the final second. Sent it to overtime. Marquise Moore and Jalen Jenkins have their very first win in the A-10 tournament as Patriots. An 11-point overtime effort against the 10-seeded Rams. And Marquise Moore, 25 points and 19 rebounds.